This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue Sokolov. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod, then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss? This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss and her Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volgin. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. I oh, must have missed that one. Anyway, it's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry and Tom. I get it. You used the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. But? But I got the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the movie company. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero, like we've been doing all along. All right, then. Major Zero it is. We'll start over from square one. From square zero. My frequency is 140.85. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance, too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission, 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same, 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. He's an expert on the latest in weapons and equipment technology. You'll be going up against some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint, got it. Adam, your KGB contact, is waiting for you at the abandoned factory up ahead. The same factory Sokolov was being held in last week. Yes, meet up with Adam first. He's cleared the way for you to rescue Sokolov. How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area's been polluted by the fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is... Who are the Patriots? And Lali Lulelo. Lali Lulelo. Gotcha. You've been equipped with a 45 for this mission. Be careful, it's noisy. I thought standard Fox procedure was procure on-site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, this is still a sneaking mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all-out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater.
paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Ah, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble. To make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. Huh? You can thank me when you get back. All right. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. If you get bitten by a venomous animal, the poison will spread through your body and rapidly drain your life gauge. If that's the case, go into the cure screen and survival viewer immediately and inject yourself with serum. Got it? Snake, that's the home to the otten frog. The otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delicacy, so it might be worth catching them for food. The otten frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the otten frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? Right. So that means they must taste pretty good, huh? I guess so. I hear that in Japan, otten frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. Snake, that area is inhabited by the Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous, and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Sounds like it's going to be tough to catch one. So, aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. <sighs> maybe you are. When you're bitten by a venomous animal such as a snake or a spider, or hit by a poisoned arrow, the poison will start to affect your body. Your life will decrease with each passing minute, so cure the poison as soon as possible. To cure poison, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and inject yourself with a dose of serum. You can get serum from enemies. Either hold them up or shake their bodies down after you defeat them. I'm pretty sure you can also get serum by capturing the rabbits that live in that area. Snake, unlike the Virtuous Mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal... Oh, you're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigint? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Close. Huh? I am THE expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Ah. I'm the guy that designed your Trank Gun, Active Sonar, and Motion Detector. 
If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later. Sounds like the Cobra Unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? It's another name for the boss. Because of the joy she feels in battle, I suppose. Uh. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair. The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending the Alamo in the Texan War of Independence. Remember the Alamo. That's right. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building within 150 yards of the hypocenter is completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. So they're actually even more powerful than that. I don't even want to think about what happened if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah, I know. Ah, you're using the survival knife. Yeah, this thing provides me with all the bare essentials I need to survive in the field. Hey, wait. What'd you do with the knife I made you? That was a work of art. It had matches and fish hooks and thread and stuff in the grip. Sorry to have to tell you this, but that thing is useless in a fight. No way. Really? Yeah. When the grip is hollowed out like that, there's not as much space to stabilize the blade. So the joint between the blade and the grip is weaker. That makes it easier to break. I get it. You're right. With your knife, you don't have to worry about it breaking, no matter how much you swing it around. So the important thing is durability. Man, I gotta write this stuff down. Next time, I'll make it so the matches and fish hooks go in the sheath instead. Huh. Hey, you've got an M1911A1. Yeah, a 45. 50 years since the Army adopted the first model, and they're still using them. It's a real gem of an automatic pistol. But aren't you gonna need more than just one little handgun? Not at all. When you're in a tight spot or fighting in close quarters, sometimes a handgun works better than a rifle. And if I equip a knife at the same time, I can instantaneously switch over to hand-to-hand -hand combat. I see. Active sonar sends out a special type of sound wave whenever you press the left stick button. It uses the echo from those waves to calculate and display the position of nearby objects. Unlike the motion detector, it'll show you objects that aren't moving. But because you're blasting out sound waves, there's a risk that the noise will alert enemies and animals to your presence. Be careful about when and where you use it. <sighs> Something wrong? The Major told me the exact same thing. You mean during the Virtuous Mission? Yeah. He must have been reading those notes I gave him word for word. That guy doesn't know tech. <sighs> I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous Mission. But this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the Special Forces Unit of GRU, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Basically, a guy with a Scorpion is not gonna miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man. 
Whenever you find a new weapon or piece of equipment, the first thing you do is drop it in your backpack, right? But you can't use your new goodies if they're just sitting in your backpack. To use a weapon or piece of equipment, first you have to take it out of your backpack and place it on your person. To take an item out of your backpack, use the backpack option in the survival viewer. To place a weapon on your person, select weapon under the backpack section of the survival viewer. See that window on the left? That shows a list of all the weapons you've got. Choose the weapon you want to carry from the list and press the enter button to take it out of your backpack. Just remember that there's a limit to the number of weapons you can carry at the same time, so put back any stuff you don't need. To put a weapon on your person back into your backpack, choose a weapon that's already on you from the weapon list and press the enter button. Or you can just line up the icon for the weapon you want to put away with the lower right and press the enter button. Do whatever works best. Keep in mind that every weapon and piece of equipment weighs something. The heavier the equipment you're lugging around, the faster you'll burn up stamina. You can see how much your equipment weighs by going into the backpack screen of the survival viewer. If you're trying to conserve your stamina, make some cuts and toss the equipment you don't need in your backpack. When you're using the assault rifle, pressing the weapon button will hold it at waist level. That's nice if you need to drop nearby enemies with some speed but it's difficult to aim straight. If you need to take more accurate shots, like tagging enemies in vital spots from a distance, use the aim button instead. Equip the weapon in first person view and press the aim button to aim the gun from the shoulder. You can take precise aim with the front and rear sights. When you're focusing on your mark, it will be as accurate as if you were zooming in. When you fire continuously with a gun like the assault rifle, the recoil will cause your shots to veer off target. But if you crouch or lie down, you can suppress the recoil and keep a tight fire pattern. So when you gotta hit that bullseye, take a low position. Keep in mind that every weapon and piece of equipment weighs something. The heavier the equipment you're lugging around, the faster you'll burn up stamina. You can see how much your equipment weighs by going into the backpack screen of the survival viewer. If you're trying to conserve... Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. That's where I met Sokolov during the Virtuous mission. Correct, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen this time. I know. Like the Virtuous mission, Operation Snake Eater is a solo sneaking mission. There are no units in the field to back you up. Avoid engaging the enemy whenever possible. Your first priority is to remain unseen. Use the camouflage option in the survival viewer and choose your camouflage wisely. Proceed with caution. Do you want to save? Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it. Precisely because it's realistic. With the images jumping out of the screen at you, it makes for a nice escape from reality. I have to admit it made my eyes tired, but it was really intense. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of those movies anymore. When did it come out? I was still in college, so probably about ten years ago? Guess I'm out of luck then. You know, they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders. One day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want. It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. Sounds like magic. It'll happen. Make sure you stay alive to see it, Snake.
Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. 
if you get bitten by a